updating a Minecraft server. This is the complete guide to getting your server up to date. First, we're going to talk about vanilla servers, then we're going to move on to mods, and then plug-in servers. It's all going to be covered in depth in this video, so buckle in. I would recommend skipping around to whatever kind of server you have. If you've got a vanilla, just keep watching from here. If you've got a modded server, pick up there, or a plug-in server, pick up as the last server in this video. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. Now, first things first, vanilla servers are pretty easily to update, and I'm going to go ahead and prove that this server right here is, in fact, not a 1.20 server, but a 1.19.4 server. How do we do that? Well, we have Minecraft open and we have the server open. So this is the server right here. If we refresh, it's going to say it's on 1.19.4. We try to join it. It's going to say incompatible client. Let's go ahead and stop the server over here on the left. And then the first thing we want to do is download the new server.jar. Now you can do this from Mojang it, your, itself, but there's also this website here and it is linked in the description down below. Here you'll be able to see all the different releases of Minecraft and we're going to go ahead and download the latest release, which is 1.20.1 by clicking download there and then clicking download server jar. From there we can go ahead and minimize our browser and that file will be found in your downloads folder. Go ahead and uh, take it from your downloads folder here. Now before you do anything else at this point, we want to back up your server and that's going to be a recurring theme in here. How do you do that? Well just simply right click on it and then go ahead and click send to compressed zip file. An alternative is to make a copy of it, but by making a zip file like this, you can simply unzip the file, which I'll quickly show you how to do. To unzip this, just right click and extract it, and then click extract again, and your server is back how it was before this update. So move this to the side, whatever you need to do, and now let's update your server. To do that, go ahead and open up the server directory here, and then remove the server.jar. Then go ahead and move your new server.jar. This is the one that was updated, 1.20.1 into it, and then double click on it. From there, the server is going to start and the server is updated. Now, that's only a vanilla server. Modded servers and plugin servers are a bit different, but let's just quickly prove that this server is in fact updated by going back into Minecraft here. As you can see, it says 1.19.4. If we go ahead and click refresh, we can see it updates to show that, well, there is no 1.19.4. It updates to show that it's online, and that's because we can now join it right like so. No longer incompatible client. We join right on in. So there you have it. That's how you can update a vanilla server. Let me go ahead and get things set up for a modded server, and we'll update that. Before we update our modded server, though, how about we get a message from our company, Simple Game Hosting? Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown to the XYZ slash simple to start your very own Minecraft server. At Simple Game Hosting, you can update your server super easily using our version manager. Literally, you just go in there and select the version you want, click install, and it will update your server. Now, there is a bit more work to do with modded and plugin servers. You've got to update the mods and plugins as well. We're about to go over that, and that holds true on Simple Game Hosting, but as far as getting the new server versions installed, it is quick and it is easy. On top of that, we have one-click mod pack installation. We have a high-quality help center to help you out along the way with adding those mods, adding those plugins, or customizing your server, and we have live chat support to help you out if you do have any issues. So go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below to break down to XYZ slash simple and get your server started the simple way. Nevertheless, we've got a 1.19.4 forward server here. And before we even try to update this, you probably shouldn't. Just generally, you should not update modded servers. There is a 99% chance something is going to break, especially if you have any mods that add in biomes or a bunch of different items to your server. Now this server that we're updating here, we only have two mods, just enough items in journey map. These don't add any new mobs or any new items to the game. They are kind of just utility mods and actually will work on a server even if they aren't on the mods folder here. The reason I've done it this way though is because I know this will work. If you add in bombs of plenty, if you add in Alex mobs, if you add in anything that is more than just some simple utility mods, it's very possible stuff will break along the way. That's why it's important that no matter what, you back up your server and you make sure that all the mods that were on your server previously have updated and are on the server before you start the server, again, on the new version. Luckily, you can keep playing on the old version without any issues, right? So you can just keep playing on 1.19.4. You want it to update to 1.20 you can just start a new server. And that's what I would recommend 99% of the time with modded servers. As far as mod pack servers go, don't try to update those to new versions, but the mod pack creators handle that. And a lot of times they'll release different guides if it is even possible to version hop with a mod pack. Um, occasionally mod packs will release minor updates and you can usually install those as well without any issue. But generally moving from 1.19.4 to 1.20, not going to happen on a mod pack unless you have just a very few simple mods in it like we do here. With that being said, how do you update your server? Well, there's two things. First, we want to back this server up. Like I said, probably going to corrupt in a lot of cases. So go ahead and right click and send to a compressed zip file. That's going to back the server up. You can just extract this zip file later on. If you do have any issues with the server, you can start your server right back up because uh, all the data is right here. It's in the zip file. Just extract it and you're good to go. 
Now, I'm going to move that out of the way because we want to update this server. To do this, it's a bit different than vanilla. What we want to do is right click and create a new folder on our desktop, and we're going to name this our 1.20.1 Forge server. Then from there, I would recommend going through and getting all of your mods. So we have two mods here, Journey Map and Just Enough Items. We want to download the updated 1.20.1 Forge versions of those, and here they are. I've already downloaded them. These are good to go because I knew we were going to be doing this video, and I wanted to kind of skip that part of going and downloading them. Every mod that's on your server, though, needs to be updated. You need to have it downloaded and ready to add to your server once the new server is set up. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and get our new server up and running. So we'll need to download Forge in this case. If you're using a Fabric server, everything is very, very similar. Downloading the mods, all of that stuff. You'll just be using Fabric instead of Forge. But here we are, our official Forge tutorial. We have Fabric and Forge linked in the description below. Go ahead and download Forge and then come to Minecraft 1.20.1 in this case, but whatever version you want to update your server to, and then click on Download Recommended and click on Installer. Take you off to add focus. We know the drill. Wait about 10 seconds. And then after about 10 seconds, click the red skip button in the top right. Don't click anything else on this page. So click that red skip button and then Forge will start downloading the bottom left. You may need to keep or save it, but that's 100% safe to do as long as you're doing it through our links. And let's go ahead and minimize our browser here. And we want to move Forge to the desktop. The main reason for that being we want to install Forge server, right? So we need to install the Forge server. So we here it is on our desktop. We can right click open with Java. If you don't have Java, there are links in the description on how to get Java. Use Java 17, goes through everything. Then once we're here, we actually do need to install client. So click install client, click OK, let it go through this process. If Minecraft's open or the Minecraft launcher's open, it won't work. You also need to make sure you played the version of Minecraft you're installing Forge for. In this case, it would be 1.20.1, but it would remain true for 1.30. Nonetheless, let's let this finish, and then we'll want to install the Forge server. So there we go, Forge client side has been installed. Click OK. Let's go ahead and install Forge server. Again, opening up the mod system installer for Forge here with Java. Now, this time what we want to do is make sure we click install server, click in this red box, and navigate to that new folder we created. So that's 1.20.1 Forge server in this case. Click OK, and it's going to install the server now. This may be a little weird. You already have a server, but when it comes to updating Forge, it's actually easier to install a new setup, move all the files and folders over you need from your old server to your new server, and then run things, right? So that's what we're going to do here. Again, though, you may and probably will have issues depending on the mods you have on your server when updating. I want to stress that enough. It is not uncommon for modded servers to break when they update. That's why so many stay in the version that they're originally created on, unless they just have a few mods like we do here. Nonetheless, once this is finished, we'll click OK and close out of the mod system installer. And then what we want to do is open up the 1.19.4 server on one side and the new server on the other side. We're going to move over everything here except what's already on the left-hand side. So that means all of the folders except libraries are going to be moved over. So config, default config, logs, mods, world... All of that's going to be moved over. If you have additional folders, move those over as well. The only folders you do not want to move over is the libraries. Everything else is going to be moved over as well, except for run.bat, run.sh, and user JVM arguments. So that means banned players, banned IPs, eula.txt, ops are going to be moved, server.properties is going to be moved, as well as user cache and whitelist.json. Leaving the only things on this side, libraries, run.bat, run.sh, and user JVM arguments. Now, that could vary depending on what versions you're upgrading to, but generally, libraries should always be over here on the right-hand side, as well as JVM arguments. Those are the two really important ones. Nonetheless, now this server on the left-hand side is on 1.20.1. The server on the right-hand side is on 1.19.4. We can actually remove the old server because our world is over here. Now, there's one more thing we need to do. If we open up the mods folder, it's still the old mods in here. So we want to go ahead and delete those old mods and add in our brand new mods into this server. In this case, journey map 1.20.1 and just enough items 1.20.1. But if you're in a newer version, guess what? This will be a newer version. Let's go ahead and then double click the run.bat file and the server is going to start. It's not uncommon for some red to show up in the console here, some errors, some warnings, things like that. Perfectly normal. As long as the server starts and like gets doesn't crash, that's a good thing. That's a win. So we just kind of want to let it figure itself out. And again, the more mods you have, the more complex mods you had, the more and longer that's going to take. And the more likely you're going to have more errors over here as it's trying to figure things out. Now, there is one more thing that a lot of people will forget about updating a modded server. Every mod that's on your server needs to be installed locally. You just updated the mods on your server. You need to update them locally as well. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and do that. Just go in ahead and uh, copy the mods from over here. Select, copy, and then we're going to go ahead and go into our local mods folder and add those as well. We can do that from here by going to installations, hovering over Forge, clicking on the 
folder there, going to mods, deleting these old 1.19.4 mods and pasting in our brand new ones, right like so. Every single person that joins your server is going to need to do this locally and update the mods. So make sure you keep tracking the mods and all that stuff because everyone needs things both locally and on the server. Let's go ahead and now play Forge right like so and we'll meet you in game just to show you that everything is in fact working and we're on the up and up. And we can navigate to multiplayer here and we can see that sure enough updating a Minecraft server. That's the server we're updating here. If we open this up it will join us on in on the left hand side looking good. Now one thing that is worth noting is that this is going to work for us because I kind of designed it that way. For you it's very possible it doesn't work because you had more complex mods in your server. I know I've mentioned that a million times and I probably sound like a broken record here but at the end of the day it is important to note because um, it's hard to update modded servers. Luckily it's not as hard to update plugin servers and that's what we're moving on to next. I'll see you in that part of the video once it's set up. And here we are. We've got our 1.19.4 plugin server set up. We've got Essentials and World Edit as well as a Vault on this server. And if we go into Minecraft here and try to join it, well, it's going to tell us it's on paper 1.19.4. We need to uh, use a, a different client. Outdated server, I'm still on 1.19.4. How do we fix it? Well, let's go ahead and do it. First things first, we need to go ahead and obviously stop the server here. The cool thing about plugin servers is you don't have to really worry too much about world corruption and things like that, but you should still back it up. So we want to go ahead and right click and send this to a compressed zip file. We can just extract this file later on. If we do have any updates or any issues updating our server, we can extract this. Our server is still there exactly as it was before we ever tried to update. That's why I like doing this sort of backup thing like this because it's just there and you don't have to worry about it unless there is a problem. So we'll move that out of the way. Now, to update this server, the first thing we want to do is download updated versions of every single plugin. So I'll go ahead and do that really fast. Now for essentials, I know we need to go to development builds and then download these here. I just kind of I just kind of know this. I, this is just something I've worked with Vault or Essentials, excuse me, long enough that I know this is going to be the one we want here. For Vault though, this is a bit different. And that's why I want to mention that every plugin is different. The good thing about plugins is if you update your server, generally that's that's okay. Even if the plugins break, you can fix them later and there's not many, if any, issues. You might have issues with data from that specific plugin, but plugins are usually even pretty good about that with not corrupting data. So yeah, pretty okay. Vault says it's only up to 116, but I know that it is up to date still to 1.20. World Edit is one though where we definitely want to make sure we are getting the 1.20.1 version here on the right hand side, but you can see it supports 1.13.1 to 1.20.1 with one jar file. That is not uncommon and something you'll see all the time with plugins. You will need to update whenever a new version comes out, but generally the same file can support a lot of different versions. Nonetheless, we also want to download our updated server software. Now you can use paper if you want. If you want a paper server, you can come in here and download the 1.20.1 version of paper, but I would recommend switching your server to purpur -pur if you can. I've got both paper and purpur -pur linked in the description, and we want to make sure that we are selecting whichever version we want. In our case, this is 1.20.1 and downloading the recent. By the way, purpur -pur is a fork of paper. It allows for plugins and all the stuff the paper has, but it allows for even more control over lag and better performance for your server, and everyone always wants better performance, so you might as well get purpur. -pur. Nevertheless, we've gotten everything downloaded now, and what we want to do is move all of this to our desktop just because it's going to be a lot easier to manage all of these different files. So first things first, let's go ahead and move all of our plugins to the side because we want to update our server jar file first. How do we do that? Well, let's just go ahead and open this up and delete our paper.jar here, right? So just delete it, get rid of it, and then add in the purpur. -pur. Now, if you're using a run.bat file to start your server, you'll want to rename this purpur -pur file to whatever that paper.jar file was called. You could rename it to paper.jar if that's what it was called. It could be, you know, paper 1.19.20 or whatever, or it could just be server.jar. Whatever that paper file was is what you'll want to rename this. But uh, for me here, I can just uh, leave this as purpur -pur because I'm just running it directly off the jar. For your plugins, we need to update those as well. Just go ahead and open up your plugins folder here. Just delete all of the plugins that are here and add in all of your new plugins right like so. Again, plugins are great with updating and usually you don't even have to worry about updating them before starting the server, but generally I would recommend it when you start your server, things will be broken, it'll be scary looking, but plugins don't affect your world at all. So your world will be safe, 
all of that stuff. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and just double click on the purpur 1.20.1 jar there or your run.bat file to get your server started. So here we are, our Minecraft server is started. We can actually come over here in the console and type in plugins and hit enter to see if our plugins are all here. It does seem like they are. And then we can open up Minecraft, of course, refresh, and there it is. Updating a Minecraft server is now online. We can double click to join it. We'll see us jump in on the left-hand side here. And then we can op ourselves to run that plugin command in game and then you'll really be able to see, as you can see, these are all green. That means they're all working. You can test some things like try your slash spawn and all of that stuff. Make sure everything is working still and test every plugin individually. You might run into some bugs, but generally updating a plugin server is that easy. Switch out the jar file, update all the plugin dot jars, and you're good to go. And even if you miss a few dot jars, you'll just be losing the features that that specific plugin adds in, not everything else, right? So that's why plugin servers are so much better, in my opinion, than modded servers, especially if you want to keep them for a long time. You can add in plugins, you can do all that stuff, and you don't have to worry about world corruption, really, unless Minecraft itself, like vanilla Minecraft, corrupts the world. So nevertheless, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below, and that's how to update every single type of Minecraft server. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments. We'll be sure to check those out and help out all we can, and be sure to check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown to xyz slash sgh to start your own Minecraft server the easy way. Nevertheless, we'll see you in the next one. I am out. Peace.